Good afternoon, everyone. Global temperatures down in June from 0.44 degrees in May down to 0.21 degrees in June. Wait a second, we're going into summer. It should be increasing unless, well, the solar forcing from the grand solar minimum starting to kick in. Like these 19 scientists agree that it is. And in their report, they talk about galactic cosmic rays increasing, total solar irradiance decreasing. And let's take a look at the entire report in this video. And while you're watching, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT 2030. Let's jump over to Dr. Roy Spencer's site. He comes out with the monthly University of Huntsville, Alabama global temperature set. The May 2017 temperatures were 0.44 C above the 1979 to 2017 average. But what's most stark and interesting about this is the June 2017 temperatures are 0.21, literally half of that. So you need to ask yourself truly, if we're going into summertime and these temperatures are decreasing, that's a signal that something has definitely changed in our climate system. And it's not CO2. The grand solar minimum has been forecast out to drop temperatures like it had in the 1600s. And suddenly the temperatures are starting to drop contrary to any of the models that the IPCC has put out. This is a wide out here of that same graphic. I linked everything below. You can back check this information. I hope you do your own research. Dr. Spencer does a great job of putting the numerical values as well instead of just a graph so you can chart this out. I've highlighted both of these three month incremental periods in the blue box and I encourage you please compare this information. Hit that pause button and notice the drops in temperature. It is everywhere globally. It's the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere, and the tropics. Now that makes absolutely no sense when these proponents of global warming are claiming that it's the warmest year ever and it's gonna to continue to warm and continue to warm, yet the global temperatures are dropping. And again, they keep claiming that no scientist agrees with any types of solar forcing or any types of other natural forces that can outdo us, the human, putting CO2 in our environment, yet we have 19 coming out talking about specifically solar forcing and what's going to happen during this grand solar minimum coming up through this next two solar cycles. And the first thing to peg on in the report is this trend downward on the total solar irradiance. Again, I've linked all this below so you can go through. This is a brand new report from June 22nd. That's literally two weeks ago. This is some of the newest information that is in the scientific body to be discussed, debated, added into the IPCC's meetings, yet it won't be. Also, if you're a plant grower, you know about nanometer wavelengths in the different light spectrum. They broke it down this fine in detail on the watch per square meter in each nanometer band from 200 to 400 nanometers from 400 to 700, where most of our plants grow, and then from 700 to 1,000. I included that vertical orange line. This is exactly where we are in this time scale. As you can see going out, it is down from this point forward. And it's just coincidental that the Earth's temperatures are starting to cool. And this report does an amazing job also of detailing total solar irradiance in the 10.7 centimeter flux, different ways to measure output from the sun. And again, I drew that orange line exactly where we are today. And as you can see, we're going to get cooler temperatures coming up as the watts per square meter decrease. And my favorite in the report and the thing I have been talking about with Heinrich Svensmark since the beginning of this channel. And I've taken so much flack and so much criticism. And here it is proven now that the galactic cosmic rays are increasing and shall increase to absolutely record never before seen levels. I mean, we need to go back 10,000 or 12,000 years to find this type of galactic cosmic ray increase. This is going to blow through anything that's been in the last 2,000 
even accounts in multi-millennial time frames, this is going to smash those records. So when you start to see these 200-year floods, that matches up with the great floods in the 1860s, 1870s that were reported across the planet. We're going to smash right through that and start getting into these 500 and 1,000 year floods. And when you look at the news report today, all you see are gargantuan 300 year events, 200 year events, 500 year events across Asia, across South America, in Europe, in the United States. It is nonstop now with these atmospheric compression events, these most giant hailstones. At the point in the future, if this is truly the galactic cosmic ray increases, the hailstones coming out of the sky are going to be the size of basketballs. That's unfathomable. And right on cue with what this report talks about, the galactic cosmic rays are increasing. And this information came out on June 15th. Now, galactic cosmic rays are responsible for increasing cloud formation during grand solar minimums. There's an inverse relationship to the sun's output and how many galactic cosmic rays actually bombard our planet and, interestingly, your brain. I'm going to start to do a video on the effects of galactic cosmic rays on consciousness. But back to Heinrich Sven's mark, I encourage you to watch this movie, The Cloud Mystery. It is free on YouTube. It goes through the tumultuous tribulations that this man endured because of his beliefs that these galactic cosmic rays caused clouds. And now CERN absolutely verifies that it does. And the cherry on top of the IPCC smashing theory cake, rare land spout spotted in Tibet. This is one of the driest places on the planet and they are getting vortices coming out of the clouds into highland desert areas. This in itself should make you stand back and go, whoa, what is happening with our climate? I encourage you also discover the beauty of Tibet. Look through Google images. It's such a stunning place. And also take a look at the rainfall amounts. They get less than two centimeters of rain per year up there. And you're telling me that there's vortices coming down out of this thick cloud cover in one of the driest areas on the planet. Just too many things are lining up right now that we are definitely into the grand solar minimum. And things are changing so fast, our crops are going to take a huge hit. They've already taken gigantic hits this year. Look for all the prices in your food to increase. You're going to need more capital these days because everything you buy is going to be more expensive. This is going to be a global event. Our economy is going to crash because food prices are going to rise. You can't not eat. You need to pull that money out of your disposable income that's spent on retail products or travel or movies or whatever to buy more expensive food. Once you start pulling that disposable income out of the real economy to pay for higher priced food, 2008 is going to be small in comparison. I really hope you understand what we're going into. And also, Ethereum, the blockchain, the smart contracts are a result of the finance world seeing the collapse of the economy. Nobody's going to be using fiat going out on a 90-day LC to take delivery of 60,000 tons of wheat across the ocean. Not going to happen in a global financial collapse. Buyers, sellers, and traders, they're going to be moving over to smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain for settlements. This new world we're entering is going to be so different from the one we are leaving right now. I wish you the best of luck mentally preparing for it. I do thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for spending your time listening to the information. You should contact Bob Kudla, a trade genius. He'll fill you in on how our weather patterns are going to move forward and the crops that they see going up in price because of the losses.